top of the world with Times Network. And you're watching Times Now. Hello and welcome to the ninth episode of Confront as the Election Commission sets the stage for another bruising political clash across five states that contribute nearly a fifth of the total seats to Parliament. We ask one basic question and I'm sure it's at the top of your minds. Who has more at stake, Prime Minister Modi or Congress President Rahul Gandhi? To confront this question and inevitably each other, we hope, we are joined by Jay Panda, former member of parliament, and Pavan Varma, author, former diplomat, and leading voice of key BJP ally, the Dantadal United. Let me begin with you first, Mr. Panda. Do you believe that this election in five states is more a test of Prime Minister Modi's continued dominance, political dominance? Well, these uh, five state elections are being called a semi-final for the 2019 general elections. And that's because uh, these are the last round of elections uh, before the general election, and they will indeed have some impact. Uh, this is uh, an argument that has been had, a debate is going on regarding aligning state elections with national elections. Otherwise, every three months, there are these elections which become a national referendum. Mm -hmm. Even if it's only in one state or two states, they become something like a national referendum. And uh, it's a totally different subject. We should discuss that some other time. But in reality, they will have an impact. Uh, now, whichever way they go, obviously, if they swing one way or another, uh, they might influence the general election, either for the governing party, the BJP or the Congress, either way. The way I see it, uh, both have a lot at stake. But perhaps the Congress has more at stake. And for that, the, I, I see it this way. Whatever impact these elections will have on the general election, hold out the possibility that uh, the Congress could be out of power at the, at the union government for a decade, which has never happened before. The longest it has been out of government or have some influence on in government is eight years, between 1998 and 2004. Otherwise, at every other point, they were either part of the government or they were propping up the government of the mm. day, such as the United Front government in the mid-90s. So if that were to happen, if the Congress were to be out of government or out of any influence over government for 10 years, it, it could be a seismic shift because it's not a party that's based on cadres. Uh, uh, we, I remember in 2004, before their unexpected victory, uh, the party was seen to be reeling on the back foot. So I believe they have more at stake, but clearly the BJP also and Prime Minister Modi also have a lot at stake because uh, these elections, if more they don't go well. If <laughs> Interesting they, juxtaposition. If they more and lot. Yes. If they, more more in stake and lot at stake. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Varma, test of relevance for the Congress party. He says they can't afford to be out for 10 years. No, no. The, the co Congress has no ordained right to be always in power. And there are parties which have rebounded back with only two seats and been out of power for much longer. So I think there are new realities in the political matrix of India. First of all, I disagree with the word semi-finals. Semi it's a sporting analogy not applicable to pol politics. In politics, there are only the finals that matter. And we've had, had enough examples to show where parties win in what are called semi-finals and lose in the finals because in many ways the criteria are different. Hmm. Now as regards these five states, my personal view is that Mr. Modi and the BJP have uh, much more at stake. You see, these are saturation states, at least three of them, where the BJP got saturation seats. And the massive mandate with which Mr. Prime Minister Modi came was largely influenced also, apart from, of course, UP, hmm. by what he got in these Hindi heartland states. states. Now, except the fact that the BJP footprint outside the Hindi heart belt has not appreciably increased. Therefore, it's very important for the BJP to hold on to the seats that it got in 2014 
in the areas where it did well. Now, in, in the case of the BJP, it's a personal challenge for Mr. Modi as well, much more than the, that of the chief ministers. Because the BJP govern, government since 2014 has been in a sense overwhelmed by the imprimatur or, or stamp of only one personality, and that is Narendra Modi. In almost every issue, even national schemes, uh, uh, will not or state level schemes will have his picture. So it's, it's one man who was known for his decisive leadership when he came to power, he at least projected that, the promises he made, even his personality and style. But that so has been all true of, that of 18 that, elections no, so, leading up to this one. So all of What has changed? Well, all of, nothing has changed. So then why are we making this, as you've said, more of a test? for the Prime Minister now, I, I, and I will, the BJP. I will just juxtapose it as to why it's, while it's important for the Congress, it's not so important. For the BJP, it's a question of whether it can repeat its performance of 2014. No, he says it's a matter of survival and relevance. Now, now for, the Congress, for the Congress, for the Congress, it's true that these are the only states where it's a direct fight, more or less, between the Congress and the BJP, at least in the case of Rajasthan, Gujarat and Chhattisgarh, as the two largest parties. But even if the Congress were to improve its tally marginally or win one of the states, I don't believe it makes Congress in any way a substantially bigger player in the sweepstakes of 2019, given the fact that it's already down to 44 seats. Mr. Rahul Gandhi is in his first term, pres uh, term as Congress president. Expectations are low. But in the surely, case of Prime Minister Modi, expectations have always been high. And that's because he I set the benchmark yeah, high it, for himself way, yeah, he set and the, for the party. Yeah. I mean, Amit Shah, for instance, the BJP president has come out and said that, look, we are going to be in power for the next 50 years. Hmm. From that point of view, I would agree with you. The BJP has to now basically prove its claim. But remember also, it's a political party that has committed itself to Congress Mukt Bharat. If the Congress party can't come back in electorally significant states like Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, where they have everything to win and Chhattisgarh, basically that axiom of Congress Mukt Bharat that the BJP is trying to promote will come true. That would be a massive blow. Yeah, I think that if the Congress is written off in these states, Perhaps it will become Congress Mukt because of the domino effect it has down the line. But I don't like. And what the, will it do I, for I don't opposition like, unity? I don't. I don't like the word Mukt. That might. That we'll uh, come because, to that. Yeah, we'll definitely come to that. Uh, democracy is okay. about politics, and we, politics is about political parties. And let's not have an approach where you say we don't want. A no, political that's a dialectical party argument. However, we can we however, can argue that. But however, this is a stated aim. And to resist that, I'm sure the Congress will want to prove yes. that it is still a factor. So how are you saying, I haven't understood this, how are you saying that this matters more for Mr. Modi and less for the Congress? Okay, first of all, I don't think there should be a black and white polarity. It matters for both. I'm just saying that in the case of Prime Minister Modi, with the sweeping mandate with which he came to power, and this being only the first term, even the UPA as a coalition got a second term, for him to come with an absolute majority again. These states where earlier he got saturation seats and which accounted largely for the 280 plus seats he got yes. are important for them because especially the BJP in my view has not appreciably increased its electoral footprint beyond its normal Hindi, the Hindi heartland heartland. states. So, Mr. Jay Panda, let's look at and quantify this with numbers. Now, my research tells me that of the 240 plus seats in the Hindi heartland for the Lok Sabha, the BJP got more than 200 of those seats. I think the maths turns out to be about 206 if I'm not mistaken, but that depends on which states you count amongst the Hindi heartland. If the BJP is going to lose dominance in states where it almost maxed its potential, it's going to be in for a lot of trouble. So I have And noticed this is only six months before the general elections. Now, recently, there have been three major opinion polls 
by television channels, including yours, two out of those three give a clear majority to the NDA in the upcoming general elections. Well, we now, didn't. I know, but the other two did. Now, uh, we must be understood that here we are talking about the NDA having more than 272 seats, yeah. whereas last time around the BJP alone had more than 272 seats. But, uh, you know, this, uh, this is not a major issue because uh, if the NDA gets more than uh, 272 seats, they will form the government. Just a so quick caveat. Let me, yeah. A quick caveat, Jay, you'll allow me. I think it's a very fundamental issue. This far, the, up till now, the BJP had a majority on its own. One of the greatest challenges in the future, if the NDA emerges as the ruling part, uh, alliance, will be the ability of the BJP, under the current leadership, to carry with it its alliance partners, for which their experience thus far has been both limited and not exceptionally good when they've made the attempt. It's a very important point. Nevertheless, uh, this is a pre-election coalition, an existing one for a long time. And two out of these two uh, three surveys indicate that the NDA will have a clear majority in the coming uh, elections. Separately, there are surveys, again including from your channel and others, about areas where the BJP traditionally has held no seats whatsoever. Uh, I can speak uh, with some knowledge about my state, which is Odessa. Now, currently, the BJP has only one out of the 21 uh, Lok Sabha seats from Odessa. Uh, surveys have given... Uh, a range of possibilities, all of them upwards for the BJP. So I think your channel survey showed that uh, they would get four seats, which is up from one. Uh, there is another channel, there are other surveys going around recently which indicate that if the Prime Minister were to contest from a place like Puri, which is very analogous to Banaras, yes. uh, the BJP could pick up as many as 13 out of 21 Lok Sabha seats in okay, Odisha. But all this presumes that the Prime Minister in the electoral imagination still holds the kind of heft that he began with in 2014. There are indications, Mr. Jayapan, forget the record for a moment, I'll come to the record, but there are indications that that is not entirely true. So he held 23 rallies, upping the quotient dramatically in Karnataka, couldn't take his party across the halfway line. Yes, well, Karnataka, they, they had major gains and they did fall short, uh, as opposed to Gujarat, where they just pipped the, yeah, the requirement. But let me answer your question. Let me answer your question. Now, are you suggesting that Mr. Modi's electoral heft is intact? Because this scenario of the BJP returning dominant can only come true if the Prime Minister is pulling so let's, the engine. Let's, let me answer that question. I think uh, consistently over the last several years, Surveys such as the, the Global Pew surveys have shown that the Prime Minister stands head and shoulders over any other Indian politician in terms of popularity, usually in the 73-74% range, which is astronomical actually. Now, I'll wait to see what is the latest on that. Some other domestic surveys have shown that he may have, uh, his popularity rating may be a little less than that today, but still well over 50% compared to the alternative available. But it's where and, and Atal Bihari Vajpayee's own popularity was before 2004. Now, here is and look what happened. a very important point where uh, Pavan Varma was earlier mentioning about high expectations versus low expectations. Undoubtedly, the BJP has set high expectations and, and it may be challenging to meet those expectations. But equally, while low expectations can be an advantage for a contender, low expectations consistently over 15 years can turn out to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Self-fulfilling prophecy. No, no. Mr. I mean, I think the Congress under has understood one thing, and I can't claim to speak for it. And I agree with Jay that as a leader today, Mr. Modi has few challenges. And in fact, it is the Tina factor. There is no alternative, which I think is the strength of the NDA alliance. Well, you're not being very charitable to Mr. Modi if you say no. it's only a Tina factor that is uh, keeping I, I someone being, else out. I, I don't think I want to be challenging. I want to be a Democrat. In a democracy, if there is a contender who has, if not equal, but some heft, to use your expression, which can be a rallying point for the opposition, democracy needs an opposition. 
then the the battle becomes a little more equal. So then you are proving and my, my point in, in contradicting yeah, yourself. How? Rahul Gandhi wants to emerge as that contender. No, I think... And if I, he is not going to be able to pull his party back in states where the Congress has been traditionally strong, and I'm not talking about the last 10 years or 15 years, I'm talking about a larger span of history, especially political history, uh, and if he can't deliver, he is not going to be that contender. No, you see, the, uh, I entirely agree with you. But all I'm trying to make the point is that the Congress is no longer the key factor in the forging of an opposition unity anymore. Because many of the leaders of other opposition parties believe that this kind of leadership will emerge only post-elections and it need not be from the Congress and Mr. Rahul Gandhi has also said the same. So in the case of the BJP, it's clear. Mr. Narendra Modi is the leader. He stands for the man who brought the BJP into power. He has put his stamp on the governance of this regime without the slightest doubt. He has taken responsibility for its initiatives and he must accept responsibilities for its failures. That's right, Mr. Panda. That's a valid question. Now, you are putting yourself out there. You constantly contextualize the record of this government and you frame it as an adjunct of your own perhaps preponderance uh, in policy, obviously personality and deliverables. So you have a situation where today Rahul Gandhi has aimed this entire contest on Mr. Modi's electability. Simple. He's keeping his message direct. Every issue he raises, he says, I want the prime minister to answer. The that, Prime Minister that today. Mean, that doesn't the mean Prime that, Minister today is up for referendum. Well, that doesn't mean that targeting the Prime Minister will work. So let me address this question. Clearly, uh, Mr. Modi does represent. No, why wouldn't it work? Let me explain. Let me explain. Clearly, Mr. Modi rep is is representative, is emblematic of this government's performance or otherwise. Sure. Now he stands in contrast to what existed before. We had 25 years of coalition governments when it was not always clear who would emerge as the prime minister. There were exceptions like Vajpayee, but mostly it was not clear. And today, what we are pitting is what had succeeded in the past 25 years, where you don't know which nebulous leader will end up being your prime minister, and you do know this clear alternative will be the prime minister if this grouping is elected. Now, that indeed is the clash. In 2014, it was clear which way so the, if the polity Modi voted. So, was not to deliver the three heartland states, and I'm not talking about the other two because the BJP has not been traditionally strong in them, his aura of invincibility, his ability to emerge constantly as a mascot of a party that has questionable development credentials in some of the states that it's ruling, Weakens substantially. So that's your point of view. But let me, no, but how let is me it? share with you it's, my it's experience. It's a point of view that is being expressed let because of my, the argument. Let me share my experience. My experience is that this aura that exists in and around Delhi is vastly different from what I hear in the heartland. In the heartland of Odisha and other states where I've visited. Because this impression that the government is not performing, that GST doesn't matter, and so on and so forth, is not exactly true when you go beyond 50 kilometers. Well, then the BJP should have won hands down in Gujarat and in Karnataka. Well, they did manage to win in Gujarat and they did manage to gain a lot manage in Karnataka. Is the word. So let, let me not understand something. Much in these five states, in these five states, I think we, we cannot ignore the fact that the BSP has decided not to support the yes. alliance. The Samajwadi Party has also decided not to support the Congress. Now, these are very significant developments. It is no secret that if you are going to have an all-encompassing alliance against the Prime Minister and the BJP, yes. this was a crucial milestone that should have been met. So that having not been met, I don't think you can be so sanguine or casual that the, that the, uh, that the game is lost. Well, let me tell you, sir, and these are once again statistics. Here you have a situation where the BJP as of today is at 272. It began 2014 above that mark substantially. Today it's down to 272, wafer thin majority if you could even call it. Why? Because it has lost several by-elections, Lok Sabha <coughs> by-elections. So there is already the beginnings of a vulnerability, Mr. Panda. 
and 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 you're saying that you know in the heartlands and in other states there is an impression that governance is perfect they're doing I very well I didn't say the governance is perfect okay. you're misquoting me okay, so that's not doing, correct they're doing well there's an impression no, that uh, it's the, delivering all i'm saying is that the impression in and around delhi is vastly different from the rest of the country and i believe that by elections are not necessarily indicators of how general elections turn out yes so my reliance on the data available today is on three respectable surveys that have come out and including yours now yours although it doesn't give the prime minister's party a majority in the coming election uh, your your survey itself says 227 seats yes. so by far the largest a uh, pre-election coalition projected to have a number of seats. But that doesn't make the prime minister. I understand. But the other two surveys which are also by respectable agencies give them a clear majority. So you should not be so dismissive about what the reality might hold uh, based on perceptions in and around Delhi. Okay. You, yeah, okay. You know uh, uh, Rahul uh we are allies of the BJP and we believe the NDA will be in a position to form the government. let me be candid with you partly because the nda will re probably represent for the ordinary voter a better chance for effective or at least near effective governance there's no absolutely effective governance and partly let's be honest because the opposition is in disarray mm. that's the honest situation but i think even bjp strategists would be perhaps more realistic than mr panda is which is that they accept that in any government over 4 years 4 and a half years some elements of anti incumbency creep in some no here i must interject so, uh, uh, please permit me i i <laughs> I think I was being realistic in citing two out of three major national surveys you which show which shows when you which cite, shows reduction with, 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 with a shows, certain sense of self deprecation no, no, you are not it's, being it's, realistic when you say when no, no, you I, cite I'm, when you when you cite these opinion polls well, they I have think, been known to be Uh, dramatically let, let just, off the mark let me just could complete be, what i'm saying maybe your opinion so that's poll could be off the mark perhaps but what i'm citing no what i'm citing does actually Lok indicate Sabha? a reduction for the bjp yeah. india and and no, no, the no, nda the, while uh, getting let a let me think my argument if i may please i'll take uh, briefly then we can uh, pass the see the bjp strategies and the nda expectation is that it's quite likely that this time there would be an erosion of the number of seats yes and i think then what becomes very critical for the bjp as happened during the atal uh, vajpay atal bihari vajpay government is the ability to form a government in a cohesive manner with the promise of good governance with the support of allies now that is an experience i think the bjp under mr narendra modi has to understand and internalize and carry with it forces which will take it past the winning mark in case as it may happen do and the bjp strategists accept that it does not get an absolute majority do you think that own. lesson is lost on the bjp as of today no i don't think it's lost i think it needs to be internalized far more i want to ask you you know you said that you hate binaries mukt congress mukt this mukt now i want you to go back in time a little bit jog your memory back to what mr nitish kumar said I he said going to ask me that he talked of a sang mukt bharat and called for an alliance of secular parties to take on a divisive bjp okay what happened to that i will give you a short answer it was my opinion that since the rss is not a band organization to even then it was my opinion to call for a sang mukt bharat as an organization was not appropriate and i we had a discussion within the party but we needed to fight against some of the openly communal agendas associated with the rss which we will continue to do even today i am not saying the rss as a whole but there are voices within the rss who have an agenda but this which is completely uh, which is majoritarian your commitment to secularism no now now as far as this point is concerned i'm glad you're asking me this you must understand that in a coalition in a coalition each party even though a member of that coalition and by the way that is why atal ji coined the word coalition dharma mm. each party has a world view of its own 
there is there are points of conflation where they agree on some issues there are points of differences and there could be points of divergence as well on issues where the party's ideology is in is in is different to that of the largest party of the coalition a coalition does not yeah mean but those are resolved when you have a cmp yeah common i know not even a minimum common program or the right forum to discuss but there policy. is no common now, program now on secularism since you asked me no no but on common programs you don't have no, one no. so how are you saying the that NDA, your participation sure the in NDA, this alliance is tempering i'm the sure the NDA will have a common program or it should have one it's now early who the members of the nda will be that also has to be entirely because some have left and some are annoyed and some need well, to some be brought some have left for some three reasons to... one because they don't believe that the bjp respects them secondly because they can't be part of what they believe is in uh, grouping that uh, doesn't stand for basic values enshrined by the constitution and thirdly most importantly they don't want to have the rub off of a political party that is perhaps letting down the voters on its core committee so this is the point i was making that the bjp must learn to carry its allies together it's my it's a constructive suggestion with respect and when i say with respect it means it must understand no rahul let me finish it must understand that we are part of an alliance we support each other in an electoral situation but each of us is entitled to a point of view on a particular issue we can agree to disagree and where we disagree where it's not reconcilable our point of view does not need to be overwhelmed by you because you are the larger party and on secularism let me be clear the jdu under mr nitish kumar will always continue to speak for religious harmony the absence of religious strife against incitement of violence and hatred on the basis of religion and he has done so recently in the case of statement made by senior bjp Fair leaders enough. and that is will remain our line okay but but i'm coming back to you now mr jep and the reason why some of these alliance partners of the nda feel excluded is because there has been an aura of invincibility around the prime minister and the bjp it has come across as a party that has the numbers to very well do without coalition partners and that is the reason why these elections become even more critical for the bjp and the man who is their electoral mascot any weakness there will endanger this consensus that has worked within the bjp to the detriment of third parties that's why this election is even more critical any sense of weakness and the tide begins to turn not any sense of weakness only if there is a very significant shift of mood will it change and none of the, the electoral surveys that you quote sir are giving the bjp slender majorities in two states wafer thin and in one a loss and that is not inspiring there is already beginning to set in some sort of vulnerability <laughs> now you are laughing <laughs> i'm laughing But because uh, you know this extrapolation that should there be some decrease in the popularity of a mascot it's all gloom and doom is is not logical only if there is a major shift in the popularity can you make such a logical conclusion so uh, you know whether you win a state by a slim majority or you win a state by a more significant majority the fact will not change as to who will govern that state and the fact will not change as to what kind of a mood and ambiance that will create around the country but, so by no means no please let me finish but let me finish and margins me, do me, matter me, this is finish. a margin election actually let me finish uh, by no means have i said and i should not be misrepresented that everything is hunky dory for the bjp it is sure. not they clearly face challenges it will not be as uh, as great of a sweep as from the evidence available today uh, as it was in 2014 but by no means do if you look at all the evidence around by no means can you extrapolate that it's all over i think that's just 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 ridiculous i'm not saying that i'm not saying that but it will certainly constitute a setback and we can't deny it a political party that has staked its credo on ruling this 
country for 50 years can't afford to be wilting in the states that have actually given it this aura of invincibility, Mr. Pandya. So I've already said that and yes, hence indeed you use they have the term set very high. Sorry, I, I, that's not my term. It's a term that is widely bandied about in the media. Which you agree and with? No, I don't necessarily agree with it. All I'm saying is, it's not, it's not my idea that state elections are seen as a referendum. In fact, I'm very much in favor. I have written major national op-eds uh, asking for alignment of elections around two cycles, uh, as some other democracies have. But it is a fact that even if you have a single state election, uh, they are seen as a referendum. So five state elections will be seen as a referendum, whether yeah. we like it or not. And so it has to be taken seriously. Mr. Mr. Varma, I, I find this interesting because there's a small contradiction in what Mr. Panda is saying. This is a margin election. Would you describe is it a margins election, the 2019 election, and therefore no, the, the, the six months that will follow from here are extremely important because see, the margins could be affected. You see the in the first past the 250 BJP is a very different BJP from a 274 see, BJP or a this kind of BJP. speculation will go on in a first past the post system let's assume that the BJP on its own does not get a majority which I'm not saying it can cannot get but let's assume for a moment it doesn't then the challenge for the BJP and I keep repeating this is how to create and by the way it's a great myth that coalition governments don't function as effectively as governments with absolute majorities. You can check the record on many parameters of the Atal Bihari Vajpayee government a slightly different and India, the UPA, with different UPA economic governments pressures. with this. So I'm not saying that one way is better than the other. It's the quite likely that there could be a coalition government at the center with the BJP as the largest party. It's, 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 it cannot be ruled out. But that requires the challenge of carrying with you the allies. For instance, let me talk to you about Bihar. If there is a respectable seat arrangement and we are in, in the process of talks and, and if that happens, I can assure you that a very critical state like Bihar with the BJP and the JDU and, and, and Mr. Paswan, uh, certainly, if they are in alliance, they will uh, sweep the state, almost. It, contrary to some opinions which give to Mr. Tejasvi Yadav and the RGD, uh, uh, a far more uh, attraction than actually exists on the ground. We know it, the situation. But that requires that level of accommodation and adjustment, and it may be required on a pan-Indian scale. In case, as your poll suggests, as his poll suggests, there is for the BJP an erosion of the number of seats it gets because that is in itself is not abnormal. But You've you been almost in power for four years, you can't fulfill every promise, but you almost, there is an anti-incumbency. Okay, but you almost make it seem that it's only the BJP that is going to be on test on this score. I mean, look at Rahul Gandhi, the contender on the other side. Surely, he must also be able to demonstrate an ability to work with a wide array of political parties if they want to actually provide an alternative. In fact, it's not only Rahul and Gandhi. And therefore, in, therefore, these elections are crucial for Rahul Gandhi, in, his in, confidence in the, crucial. and his ability to inspire confidence. In, in fact, Rahul, I want to say that if the no, opposition... So you must, no, you must the, pick, a, a, you must pick all, one argument. First, first of all, and I, I, I want to make both arguments and I'll tell you why they are coherent. It's a challenge for the BJP and I have already explained why. It's a challenge for the opposition that if in these five elections they cannot demonstrate their ability to work together in a manner to substantially increase their electoral strength, I am afraid that message is going to go to the voters. The opposition in singular, opposition in collective. In collective. Not the Congress. No, the, because the Congress is a player among many opposition parties. Now, for instance. Not in these three now, states, for instance, at there, least, there with is, the greatest there is number except, of. Let us take Gujarat as one example. If there was an alliance that the Congress had managed to stitch together with, for instance, the NCP or the BSP in a, in a coherent manner. But that didn't ground, happen because because the Congress party doesn't inspire confidence that and that be. is precisely the reason or why no Rahul Gandhi has greater or there's no advanced planning stake. and secondly and very importantly you need cadres at the ground level otherwise sure. otherwise but I'm cadres afraid. respond to victory especially yeah. because the Congress but party doesn't have 
much of a cadre. I, 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 it, it doesn't. It needs to, in Madhya it Pradesh, needs to we are facing this problem. That's precisely what I'm to saying. Build the so how are you saying, Mr. Varma, that in the end analysis, this is a greater test, a challenge for Mr. Modi, and it doesn't so much qualify as being an immediate examination of Rahul Gandhi. Uh, I would think that it. I think that I must uh, uh, make myself absolutely clear. For Mr. Modi, because he is the contender for power and has in the, just in the first term, he has to come into a second term and as is expected, he, his performance in these elections will indicate whether the BJP comes back to power, if not with the same numbers, but at least with a credible number of seats in 2019. For the opposition, it is at... But you've just uh, said that you don't agree that this is a semi-final before the final. Yes, You're yes. making now this, the semi-final uh, before the final. Why I said it's not a semi-final? Because I've seen that even the results in assembly elections seem to indicate one trend. In the next six months, things happen. And finally, it's what happens in the election. Then you are aware of the example. So are we then, I'm coming back to this question, are we then to go by the results of these elections or are we just supposed to say well they were just another bunch of elections that I came think along that the, the, both positions are a bit exaggerated of course the elections will indicate a certain mood of course they will carry a message for b both the uh, the nda and the opposition now you said parties. you were going to be very clear but this I, is certainly but, but not the articulation a, of a person but, uh, who is being absolutely uh, Rahul, clear it's, it's an honest answer how it's can an you honest expect answer, me to say Mr. that it has no message honest answer these elections are part of the course the humdrum of electoral politics in India let's not take our eye off of course the 2019 election because they will be independently decisive of the fortune of this government are you clear about that or are you also going to somehow straddle the middle no I'm very clear you're very and clear. let me what I've been saying throughout this show is the following that the BJP has more challenges today than it had in 2014 but it has less challenges than its alternatives its opposition uh, the numbers say so from whatever surveys are out there, but I want to uh, ex explain this a little further. What has been discussed here is that the BJP is based on a leadership and the opposition is based on a coalition. And Pawan has been saying about how the BJP has challenges managing its coalition. But the reality is the opposition is not getting its coalition in place. And the opposition doesn't either have a face to, uh, to counter uh, Mr. Modi. So on both fronts, it looks like the BJP actually has an advantage because whichever coalition they have, including Pawan Verma's party, they have a coalition. Yes. Whereas the opposition uh, for even these five states are not able to get the coalition in place and they are not able to agree on who would be their face for 2019. So on both fronts, I believe Mr. Modi and the BJP have an edge. It doesn't mean they're uh, going to have it hunky-dory. It's easy, but I think I, they have an edge. I think on this point, I must agree with Jay that Mr. Panda, because the opposition does not have a face. The opposition has not attempted to get a face. The opposition has not moved, when I say opposition, I mean collectively, beyond photo ops. They have not moved to programmatic content. They have not done fine tuning at micro levels of seat adjustments. They have not tried to why organize. Is this? Now, why is it? It's Are they too disparate? No, I, I think that it's, it's a lack. Sometimes I actually feel it's just a lack of any central pivot and 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 and, and, and then, too many egos and then Pavan too many egos clashing against this is very worrying too many egos lack of a central pivot this doesn't all go well for a coalition experiment in 2019 i as a voter perhaps going to cast my vote the in 2019 button. will be mightily worried about stability i think that and therefore perhaps then uh and I, I, I would then weigh in with what Mr. Jay Panda is saying, that these elections are part of a cycle, but the 2019 elections will be the ones that will determine the fortunes of the BJP, the Prime Minister, and I know it's, it's an obvious thing I'm stating, but more so now, than the, and the Congress Party. No, without a doubt. So, I, so I, let's I think just that discount. In a, in the hype way, around we, are all, the, we are all agreeing no, with the each hype, other. The hype around this particular election, the inevitability of it being the semi-final which I discounted from the which beginning. you discount which he also I think discounts I mean I, I would so, rather that it weren't 
but uh, many political commentators uh, do believe that these kind of uh, elections uh, sort of set a, uh, a trend or set a mood. Okay, so uh, we've got to wrap up here. There are two basic takeaways from this debate, and it's been an informed one, and I'm glad to say without too much contention. The first fact is that these elections, while they might be the part of an electoral trajectory which is inevitable in our democracy, they will only have a marginal bearing on the outcome in 2019. They will not have a definitive bearing on the outcome in 2019. One. Two. As far as the stake goes, who has greater stake? There has been a significant divergence of views. While Mr. Pawan Verma believes that the BJP has more to prove in these elections, Jay Panda says, well, the BJP has a stake, but not as great a stake as the Congress. Am I, am I agreed on this? Are we all agreed on this? You're in, right in about large my, my opinion, that the Congress opinion. has much more at stake. Much more at stake. The, Bhavan Verma says, well, you would err on the side of the BJP, right? I think that the BJP will have to prove its winnability okay. with the same numbers as 2014 in this election. And it will have a but bearing I don't on mean, the margin in 2019. But you see, the converse cannot be written off. Of the course. Congress also has a lot Of course, I stake. understand. So there is, there is a certain degree of agreement on this particular panel on the significant larger question of semi-final versus a final. But on the other question, there is also a divergence uh, on that big question about who has more at stake. We leave it, of course, to the voters to decide, and then we will analyze your mandate. We leave it at that. Thank you for watching Confront.